I had a patient, a young patient, come in the other day with symptoms of anxiety, uh, mostly panic attack, difficulty with breathing, all the symptoms of anxiety and a panic attack. And uh, her primary care doctor was already sending her to counseling, just had a little bit of a flare up. And for that, we usually will give Band-Aid medicine to calm down all the symptoms until the psych counselor and the patient and the family find a way into relaxation therapy and calming down what caused the initial flare-up. It's usually a trauma that's not recalled, but hopefully uh, my patient gets uh, well with continued counseling. As an integrative medicine physician, I would always wonder, how is this kid's thyroid? And that's what I wanted to talk about today is anxiety and thyroid. This is a picture of a chin, a neck, and shoulders. This here is a thyroid cartilage. It's an Adam's apple that you'll feel in and you'll see in some men. You'll kind of feel it in women. That's always part of the physical exam, by the way, so the doctor should always be feeling the thyroid. The thyroid gland sits on top of the cartilage like a bow tie. It has a right lobe and a left lobe and something called an isthmus that connects it. The gland is supposed to make thyroid hormone from when you're a baby in mom's belly until you pass away at the age of 100, if you're healthy. The thyroid gland, if it doesn't have the building blocks to make thyroid hormone, will be making less hormone. So if the thyroid makes decreased amounts of its subtypes of thyroid, mostly T3 and T4, that's the ones that are most active and the ones that most docs will check, if the free T3 and the free T4 are decreased in the bloodstream, the brain up here will sense that there's a low amount of that hormone and it'll send stimulation to the thyroid. Thyroid stimulating hormone that comes from the brain will come down and kick this thyroid into gear if the thyroid can do it. Usually the feedback loop is positive. It reacts within milliseconds and then it takes care of itself so you don't feel the little glitches. You don't feel the, in uh, an underactive thyroid, you won't feel constipation, you won't feel depression, you won't feel uh, or notice brittle hair, brittle nails. Uh, so uh, th those things, including weight gain, will not be felt if this thing is working properly, the feedback between the brain and the thyroid gland. Now if in the case of a young person, the thyroid is making too much thyroid, sometimes an inherited disorder like Graves disease or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the thyroid will make way too much and they'll tell the brain, I got way too much, and the brain will say, oh, stop. It'll try to decrease the amount of thyroid stimulating hormone in the bloodstream. So you can see that we can easily, as doctors, check these three blood tests at the least and hopefully come up with a diagnosis. But it's always important not to just treat the blood test. We always have to treat the patient. So I don't wait until these are totally abnormal. If I have somebody that has a normal looking blood test, but he has all the symptoms, I'd probably go ahead and start the treatment plan whether it's using iodine for the underactive patient or kind of finding out what is irritating the patient to make more thyroid, like in Hashimoto's. I really think that there's allergies that cause the flare-up. The white blood cells attacking the thyroid are going to eventually attack the thyroid, whether you like it or not, if you have, if you have inherited disorder or if it's in the genes. But as Herb Benson has found out and Richie Davidson has found out, if you kind of take away the irritants in the bloodstream, you can actually repress the genes. It's not sure whether it's permanent or just for now, but talk to anybody with Graves' disease, it'd be nice to have a couple, 10 years where you don't have to worry about the disease process. And that means living healthy and looking for other things like mercury or gluten allergies, then do it. But I don't know that all the endocrinologists out there will agree. I do believe that if the, the gland is making too much, it'll produce all the symptoms of anxiety, uh, diarrhea, massive weight loss, changes to skin and hair, and sometimes it'll be obvious, like in my young patient that I saw. So some of the things to look for, again, are blood tests. Some of the things to do is band-aid therapy while the doc's looking for the blood test, either that or sending to an endocrinologist, a specialist. Some of the things you can do would be uh, relaxing, learning to bring out the relaxation response. Nobody teaches that. I think a good counselor will probably get to that eventually, but uh, my link to Andy showing 478 breathing is one easy entry into relaxation therapy and building up the relaxation response. That takes practice, just like an athlete has to practice the athletic endeavor over and over again to be good at it, uh, so too you have to really relax and develop a relaxation practice, whether it's yoga, 
meditation, something has to be started and hopefully somebody will be able to grab onto the right kind of relaxation uh, technique. Other things to do also, passion flower. Passion flower, valerian. 5-HTP, inositol. I'll put all these down. These are all things that you can buy over the counter that a lot of these integrative psychiatrists will use before going to medicines. And definitely with regards to young people, cutting back on the stimulants, caffeine, the products of caffeine, fructose, high uh, concentrated fructose or corn syrup very stimulating to a lot of folks with a hormone response and you have to really curtail some of that diet. Again, gluten, always important to control. I think even if there's no gluten allergy, during the time period that you're working up and dealing with these symptoms, I think gluten and dairy, if it can be taken out of the diet, would be helpful. So hopefully I'll put links to my other talks where I've mentioned inositol, passion flower, extract. Uh, the extract for kids would be with glycolic acid because the extract for adults has alcohol in it. Um, 5 htp and, and uh, valerian. Valerian with lemon balm works great for kids. So these are all important. There are prescription medicines that can be used in a pinch because these are slow and steady versus prescription medicines which are band-aid therapy but they hit hard. But as I tell everybody, when you are given a prescription therapy, you always have to have an exit plan. So you don't just get a Xanax and deal with the symptoms and go to counseling. You always have to have an exit plan of when am I going to get off the Xanax, when am I going to get off the SSRI. So uh, although the, patient, the doctor-patient relationship will probably be very strong when you have the symptoms relieved and controlled, always think ahead of time and say, okay, now that things are good, when do we make the other lifestyle change? So hopefully this helps with regards to thyroid disease and its effect with anxiety and how the two are interlinked. Um, again, you can see my other links that I've put here for uh, 478 breath awareness, meditation beginning, and then uh, eating properly to decrease uh, the stimulatory effects of caffeine, 5-hour energy, and uh, high uh, fructose corn syrup.